I can't believe it. Oh my god, finally, finally. Okay, so here we go. The dupe has just delivered that and... Hmm. Well, my friends, the cooling loop is not yet fully loaded, but uh, it's, already have, it's already having a profound effect on the environment, uh, the temperature. <laughs>
for now we are just going to have the basic, uh, an input of materials for uh, future thingies, uh, like the uh, rocket port and uh, other things that our dupes, or in this case the conveyor rail system, uh, might bring in here. Uh, but pretty much all we need is uh, these two automatic, automatic dispensers, put them in uh, sweep only, and uh, then start uh, cleaning all of the map. As we can see the frames are starting to... Uh, get affected a little bit by the amount of uh, junk that we have all over the place. Uh, so uh, doing the uh, cleaning sweep uh, of the map is always a good idea. Alright my friends, so uh, I already have uh, set up the filters. Let me just make sure, sweep only, sweep only. Okay, so this is going to be the cold side. This has the stuff that can be affected by temperature easily, like phosphorite, fertilizer. Uh, this thing, phosphorite, melts very easily, like... Uh... Uh, well, it is very easily, when you put it in, into perspective, if you put like a, a hing, uh, an ingot of uh, a thousand degrees on top of it, uh, yeah. Uh, sulfur can also uh, melt relatively quick. Uh, let's go over here. Yeah, even quicker than uh, phosphorite. So yeah, stuff that melts quickly comes into this side. And um, that can get affected by temperature, like dirt. Dirt tur turns into sand very uh, easily. Um, algae uh, also has the same problem, and the seeds, I don't know if the seeds are affected or not. And on the other side, you just put all the other stuff, like the minerals, the refined metals, the ores, uh, abyssalite, sand, clay, and, uh, you know, a few other things that don't get affected by temperature, so if they are cold or hot, it doesn't really matter too much. And, uh, well, now you press the button K, and you just start uh, sweeping everything. Uh, I'm not going to do an entire sweep command of the entire map. First, I want to clean my base because this is absolutely disgusting. I don't understand how these dupes have lived like this for uh, so long and not complained. Of course, that the, the cleaning efforts will, be, will have to be done passively because, well, mining this entire part is more important. Uh, there is a bunch of iron. There was a huge iron node over here, and there is another one over here, so... I think we'll we'll be good for iron for a little while, uh, but still. Uh, I'm pretty sure that on the other planet there is also a big chunk of iron. Uh, so, um, if we have the opportunity of getting it, uh, why not, right? And uh, let's take care of this a little bit as well. <gasps> I can't believe it! Oh my god, finally, finally! Oh, I've been waiting for this moment for so long, my friends, you have no idea. This egg is going to be incubated because I want it rolling as fast as possible. This is going to be the last uh, Draco ever to be etched. And uh, the other eggs, I'm pretty sure that I know what I'm going to do with them. Hmm. Okay, my friends, so... I think this is as low, this is the lowest point that we are going to dig. This is going to be the septic tank for our industrial area, and then we'll have all of this space available to us. Uh, of course, that we are not going to build it uh, all right off the bat, right? It is a large area, uh, but at least I would say that this square over here for our in initial um, the cooling loop on top, then the forge area on the bottom, and then a few things of. Um, uh, production uh, for stuff like glass, uh, the uh, this thing, kilns, yeah, kilns for uh, refined ca carbon and uh, ceramic, and a few other things that I'm probably forgetting. But there is a few um, th uh, um, buildings that we want to get immediately, uh, so that we uh, solidify all of those production thingies, and uh, then we can expand as we uh, see the need. Like for example. Um, once we go into the um, oil planet, we'll start transporting oil, so we'll need to build a refining area and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Eventually, we'll start adding stuff into our industrial area. We just need to uh, get into that point of the game first. Well, the printing pod keeps presenting us with snazzy suits, which I will take, given that uh, no dupe is uh, that interesting. Uh, but, uh... At this moment in time, I don't think we need any more snazzy suits, because as we can see, our entire crew is already at maximum snazziness. Okay, so let's see what's behind door number one. It is a Nero Vacillator. Can we destroy this one? Yes, we can. So uh, we can demolish this thing out of the way. 
Uh, I hope that I find another Vasilator somewhere. Because, uh... Hmm, I think we are... Yeah, we only have access to one on this map. Hmm, that's not uh, exactly, uh... Extremely good news, so, uh... I'll see if I can spare it, because, um... Uh, you can use recharges on the Vasilator to get uh, additional uh, traits. You don't... you know... Y Right now, this thing is already recharged, so if we want, we can give the treat to any dupe. Uh, I think I'm going to give it to Ellie, because Ellie is uh, the dupe that I'm going to choose to go to the other planet. I'm just not going to send her right now. Uh, and because... Of, uh, okay, you know what? Let's... Ellie, sit over there. Have your brain the fried for a little moment, and complete neural thingy, and she has the regenerative trait. It's one of the worst that you can get. Usually, I really like to get the Sunny Disposition because it just gives them a uh, morale bonus. But oh well, you can't always have what you want, I suppose. Oh, look at this! The uh, Glossy Dreclet, Dreclet has already been born. How beautiful. Uh, let's see, do I have the thingy selected for Glossy? Uh, now I have. Uh, so please, Ruby, go grab Jimmy over here. You have... Uh, looking at your face, I would say you are a Jimmy. Uh, so that uh, we can start taking care of him and have him lay more eggs uh, for us. Uh, so that we can replace all of these Dracos with the proper kind of um, uh, Draco. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I have some bad news. Where are the steam generators? Uh, I think I don't have them unlocked yet. We need... oh boy. Applied Science Research. The yellow one. Which one is this one? Uh, okay, okay. The orange one is the uh, data analysis, the one that uses the data banks. Which means this one is the uh, radioactive research. Uh, Unfortunately for us, we don't really have a lot of sources of uh, radio radiation just yet. Uh, this thingy over here, it's the only one... Oh! Okay, that changes things. Let's go over there, let's capture that Wizward. Uh, I don't know if I have any other seed of Wizward, maybe from a piece of ice that might have melted away. I don't think I have. Uh, but uh, maybe we'll get lucky and eventually we'll have a few extra uh, come to us in the printing pod. So, um, you know, let's take care of that uh, radio... Uh, uh, applied materials uh, research thingy, because uh, clearly we are going to need it for the cooling loop. I th I I'm sorry guys, I really thought I had the um, final piece of the puzzle already uh, in my hands, which was the uh, glossy dreclet. But no, 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 I still have to do some more research before we can proceed. Now, my friends, this is our basic setup for the uh, radiation collection, right? Uh, I'm going to have two of them just built. Um, they are not going to be functional anytime soon. Uh, where is that wizard? This is what we need. Apparently, we have uh, not yet uh, mined it out, but uh, our dupes should get going pretty soon. Okay, let's just uh, let's just do this. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. As I was saying, uh, basic setup, uh, these things collect the uh, radiation, they shoot it into the Red Bolt Reflector, which is going to point it down towards the Material Study Terminal. Uh, this thing allows you to do uh, yellow research, which we really, really need for this thing, right there. Uh, we can start getting the other points going, uh, the radiation is going to take a little while to uh, start taking effect, uh, but uh, eventually we'll get there. Unfortunately, because we only have one Wizward, it's like really gonna take its time. Uh, but uh, if we find um, eggs for these thingies, the shiny bugs, uh, we are going to deposit them over there. In fact, let me just take care of that right now, so I don't forget. Uh, because they are also radioactive. Not a lot, but hey, all the radiation helps. Alright, my friend, so we are going to move our lab facilities all the way over here. I hope I have enough space to put the uh, artifact uh, station over... I think it's t three squares, so it should fit over there perfectly. Uh, we are going to put some lights over here to speed up the researching pro uh, research 
uh, progress. Uh, dupes work faster when they have uh, their space lighted up. And uh, we're going to put some motion sensors uh, just to make sure that these things are not wasting power when no dupe is here. Especially because we can go uh, a long time without any research project, right? So uh, no point in wasting power on that. Now we are going to use conductive wire for the first time uh, for these thingies. Uh, because, uh, well, it's just future-proof. This is uh, permanent now, so um, I kind of just want to leave the things already uh, ready to go because uh, I'm pretty sure that a normal wire would not be able to uh, accommodate all of the uh, power needs for this entire area. Look at Jimmy, all grown up. Uh, let's take a look at you. Okay, you have a, 60, a base 65% for the uh, glossy egg, but uh, as he uh, consumes more and more meal wood, that chance is going to increase. Uh, not only that, your scales should... Yep, scales are at 100%, which means that uh, tomorrow we should have our very first batch of plastic. Alright, so with the first Wizwort over here, as you can see we already have a little bit of radiation, 300 and something. Oh, there is a new sound effect, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Let's just connect that. Hmm, interesting. I wonder how that sound is going to behave once we have a billion zillion radiation all over the place. Uh, but uh, given the fact, I completely forgot how radiation is... Uh, more powerful now. Oh, we already have the plastic. Look at that. 150 plastic out of this Draco. Beautiful. Now, uh, I believe it is like something like three days for these scales to grow or to regrow. Uh, but uh, it needs to be three days within a uh, hydrogen uh, atmosphere. So it's going to take a little bit of time. But uh, the second we have more um, eggs to uh, hatch, we are already ready. And uh, in fact, until we have a bunch of them, uh, I want these to be powered, like so. Okay, so uh, hopefully this will um, uh, attenuate the radiation that our dupes are going to suffer. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, yeah, the radiation doesn't go from here on uh, into the base, and uh, over here, uh, the dupes probably will just get a mild uh, exposure. That's because uh, I changed it into. Um, uh, what is this? Uh, insulated tiles? Because insulated tiles have a far uh, greater uh, absorption, or in this case radiation blocking um, rating than uh, regular tiles. Well, it's not a lot, it's 4%, so it's a little bit better, shall we say. Well, given our current situation, in order to speed up the process, we could use, or we could try to use one of these, radiation lamp. Um, it's going to be the first time I'm using it, and to be honest, I'm using it more for the uh, novelty factor, because I want to see how it works. Um, and, you know, because it's probably going to be uh, useful, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but once we have more wizards and uh, other sources of radiation, we are not going to be using is this. We only have a very limited amount of uranium, so... Yeah. Uh, we need to power it, though. There we go. Now let's just hope for the uh, dupes to deliver the uranium, and we'll see um, the difference afterwards. Okay, so here we go, the dupe has just delivered that, and... Hmm. Okay, interesting, there is a little bit of radiation bleeding out uh, from the base. Because this thing appears to be... Whoa, quite potent, a thousand rads per cycle, versus the three, 300 that this thing had. Uh, let's just take a look. It's quite simple. We just need to go over here and bam no longer uh, Yeah So uh, one with worth is 300 reds. This thing is like three with uh worth of radiation So, uh, you know, let's just use it for a little while until we have what we need afterwards. We uh, stop using it It's not like amazing, but uh, still it's far better than uh, it was before here we go, so uh, the first red bolt has been shot, however 110 appears to be a little bit too much, so let's uh, turn it down to 105. Uh, this thing can only hold 100 red bolts, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's like uh, uh, 20 per research point or something like that. Uh, we are about to see that uh, once the uh, cycle 
uh, turns, the uh, researching dupe, Nicola, will come over here and start doing some research. Here we go. So uh, let's take a look on, uh, on how much does it... Whoa. 11 red bolts for one point? Really? Uh, okay. Okay. No, 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 it's not 11, don't be uh, dummy. It's 10 per uh, uh, per point. So which that means that we have over here 10 points uh, worth of red bolts. And in the next cycle, because this thing is collecting 100 red bolts per cycle, it's shooting 105. So roughly when the next cycle begins, we have another red bolt available, which means that we are going to be able to finish this research uh, by the end of the next cycle. And because we already have the plastic, although we don't have a lot, we can start thinking about uh, creating those cooling loops. Finally. And there we go. The research has been done. Now, I'm going to use the remaining uranium that we have inside of the lamp. Uh, I placed at the priority one, so I hope that the dupes will not resupply it. Uh, but, uh, well, since it is already here, let's use the remaining of that stuff uh, to do a few more uh, researches. I'm pretty sure that we'll find something useful for us to get in all of these thingies. Oh, I know what I'm getting. I'm getting one of these. Because that way, the second we get into space, we can get we can set up a uh, laboratory uh, for the data, ba data bank collection uh, right off the bat. Instead of just using the uh, small uh, cockpit, we can uh, s uh, do something uh, permanent. So uh, yeah, I think I'm going to get uh, that one going as well. But now we have the um, thing is how much plastic do we need? 200 kilograms. All right. How are you going on your scales? 38%, uh, but uh, we have another egg coming, so uh, the plastic production should ramp up uh, relatively quickly uh, from this moment onwards. So, I would say that this is a good amount of water. We can uh, stop providing uh, water now. Let's go over here, cut this, and uh, deconstruct all of this, and all of this, and all of that. We'll let the, rem the water inside of the pipes be consumed by the uh, timbal reeds, but uh, once they are done, they are going as well. And, uh, well, it's time for us to pop this uh, water tank. It's Hopefully it's not going to make a mess. I believe in that tile, the water is going to land right there, and hopefully not make, it make a mess. I already prepared the septic tank for that. So, you know what? Time to deconstruct. And then transfer all of this slime also uh, down here. Uh, I don't know where yet, but uh, in, in one of these corners. Uh, we just need to have two tiles of water before we can do that, otherwise it's going to start to off-cast and we don't want that. Here we go. I'm pretty sure you guys want to witness this beautiful event. Just look at this messy, messy water coming. It's a tsunami of... Uh, Polluted water, please don't make a mess. Please don't make a mess. Please don't make a mess. It's not going to make a mess. All right. <laughs> what a long... S <laughs> oh boy, I just love this. Just take a look at this. It's beautiful, isn't it? Well, I mean, all that effort to get the plastic and now the game just... You know, it's like, okay, you finally got it. Now, here is the materials that you need to finally get those cooling loops running. Okay, uh, thank you, game. Uh, that's actually very kind of you, because now we have enough to make three steam turbines, which means we can make three cooling loops, and we also have a bunch of steel ready to run. So, uh, yeah. No more waiting. No more waiting needed. Uh, but uh, I also noticed that we also have more uh, glossy Dracolet eggs uh, ready to roll, so uh, pretty cool on that regard. Now, in any case, I'm going to start building the cooling loop of this side because this is kind of important. This area is getting pretty toasty. Uh, not only from having this thing running, but because uh, we are also storing up very hot uh, natural gas. So, yeah. Yeah, things are going to get uh, interesting if we don't do the cooling loop. Uh, so how about we start thinking about that? All right, my friends. So for the cooling loop, what do we need? We need, as we already know, a steam turbine. Not made out of steel, preferably. 
I'm just going to put it smack in the middle. A little, don't care too much. Uh, this is going to be a small one. Uh, then we need to go into utilities. Utilities, I said, not radiation. And build an aqua tuner. This one I want to be made out of steel, please. If at all possible. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, uh, like this. Uh, given that the uh, cooling loop is going to point to this side, we want the output to also point towards that side to make life easier on ourselves. Uh, Ren, do you really do you really think that's a, a wise idea? Do you really think that's a wise idea, Ren? I think, yeah, that's much better. Okay, so uh, this one is going to be a relatively small chamber. Uh, the industrial cooling loop is going to be a slightly bigger, but uh, I kind of want to build it like this because we might want to have access towards this area through here in the future. Uh, I don't see why we would want to do that, but still, leaving options to, uh, for us is always a good idea. Uh, we can also access through here, but uh, because, uh, you know, we have this ginormous volcano over here in the middle, uh, we might run into some issues, so having a little bit of uh, extra space, uh, it's never a bad idea. So. In order for us to get our cooling loop, right, uh, we just need a few extra things, like this, and uh, one thermal sensor. Where are the thermal sensors? A liquid pipe a thermal sensor. Right there. Okay, so, uh, the objective of all of this is to create a way to keep a uh, coolant, whatever the fluid we might choose, under a certain temperature, right? It's a pretty simple concept. In order to do that, we need, a, we need an aqua tuner with the following setup, like so, and like so, and then output goes through here, and here. There we go. Uh, so, pretty much, this sensor is going to be reading the temperature of the water within the pipe and informing the thermo aqua tuner if it should work or not. Then, we have this bypass over here. If the aqua tuner is not working, the water is going to keep flowing through it and then moving into the um, output. Nicola, stop interrupting me, please. As I was saying, and it's going to keep on moving towards the output of the cooling loop. Uh, reason for that is we want the cooling loop to be constantly flowing, and if we don't build this, uh, the second the aqua turner stops uh, working, the uh, fluid will also stop f uh, flowing through the pipe. Cool, so we are almost there. Uh, the only thing left is for us to clean this mess. We need to clean this mess because we are going to seal this chamber, never having access to it again, and this would, like, be a mess forever, <laughs> and we don't want that. Uh, next, we also need to fill up this chamber with water uh, to uh, form into steam. And in order for us to do that, we have to deconstruct this thing uh, in a pattern of um, one built, one not built, one built, one not built. So that uh, as we pour fluids into the chamber, they push the gases out of the way and that will um, <coughs> uh, prevent it from having any pockets of gases over here that would interfere with the steam process. Um, we only want to have steam over here, nothing else. Uh, and then we are going to cancel this thing for, for now. We don't really need to build it just yet, because uh, I need the space to build these bad boys. And... and... bam! There we go. So. Uh, first, we are going to fill up the bottom layer with uh, with brine. I kind of want. I I, run, I don't remember if if brine is heavier than uh, water or not, but uh, oh well. I'm, we are going to assume that it is, given that uh, brine has salt in it and water does not. It would be a reasonable uh, logic to think that brine is heavier. Therefore, it should be poured first, so that it doesn't create a mess. We want to have two layers of uh, fluid in order to fill up these two tiles of space that we have to do the pushing of the gases like we mentioned before. Oh, thank you, game. Thank you. Uh, I have to admit, this playthrough of the game has been quite generous with me. Um, I don't know why, and I fear its generosity, but at the same time, I shouldn't say uh, no to, the, to such uh, a gift. Uh, cool, so now we'll, uh, we'll double the amount of radiation that we are producing, which is pretty cool. 
Okay, so we are close to uh, 200 kilograms per tile uh, with the brine. I think that's a good layer. Uh, we can now change from uh, brine into water, I'm pretty sure. So let's pause just to make sure that the uh, no dupe uh, delivers brine while there is al also water being delivered. We don't want to mess this, uh, this up. We can unpause it now. Uh, I'm going to wait to have like uh, maybe 200 kilograms of water. I think that's also a uh, good amount. And then we are going to close off this thing, slam the steam turbine on top of it, and in fact, we can start thinking about um, the pipage for the cooling loop. We want to have pipes over here, and we want to have pipes over on this part and this part. Uh, in, on top, we are going to have the petroleum uh, burners. Uh, in the future, so we also want to have a uh, the cooling loop going through there. Uh, oh no! N no, that's that's terrible. Ah! I tell you what went wrong. This one is pointing in the wrong wrong way. Uh, this one should be pointing into this tile, and not this tile. Uh, as the water went through, it pushed. Uh, the uh, brine out of the way that messed up the uh, water physics and uh, we got this ginormous mess. I'm going to try to clean up that tile over there and then put the bottle emptier pointing in the right direction and then hopefully that is going to allow me... Stop! 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 stop, stop, stop. Alright, here we go. So, uh, I don't know how, but I kinda fixed this. It's kinda fixed. Kinda. Hopefully they will not lose... Yeah, they are going to lose their uh, grip eventually, but uh, it's kind of fixed a little bit more water and uh, yeah, if we add water and, w and we do a quick build, we might just be able to do this. Alright my friends, there is no point in messing with it anymore, I just noticed these tiles over here are vacuum. Uh, so uh, there is no gas inside of the chamber, let's just lock it up and kick off the cooling loop so that we can um, turn all of this water into steam. Well, my friends, I have here a really uh, interesting dupe, Ada. Uh, we need more operators for mechatronics engineers, and she is a radiation eater, caregiver is whatever, and loud sleeper. Given that we are going to give each individual dupe their own room, loud sleeping is not exactly a problem for us. And uh, this thing, this trait is like interesting, uh, not exactly something. Uh, that we uh, are desperate to get, but uh, still, I never got a dupe with this trait. So I say let's print Ada and let's give this mock room to her so that she doesn't bother anyone uh, while sleeping. And this uh, shine bug, unfortunately, needs to go. Oh, also, we are going to rebuild our millwood farm because uh, a big chunk of our food just went bad. So, uh,. We probably could replace all of that linse loaf. Uh, yeah. Man, I just ate when I uh, built something out of steel and I can't find it. Uh, I lost 200 uh, units of steel and I swear to God, I don't remember where I built them. I, at, first, at first I thought it was this, but no. Everything in here is made out of copper. All of the new uh, incubators that I'm building over here are made out of copper. Everything is made out of copper. I've been extremely careful and... Uh, Somehow, 200 uh, units of steel has, have been lost, and I am a little bit upset about it. There is still plenty of work orders to do, but uh, our power plant is finally taking its final cha shape. Um, I'm soon going to deconstruct these thingies, uh, as I already have access to plastic, and therefore I can put the high pressure vents. Uh, I'm putting the petroleum boilers in place just as a placeholder, we're not going to be using petroleum anytime soon, but uh, we can kind of build them so that we can have a uh, appreciation for the final part uh, of the build. Now, uh, we are also going to put our battery bank over here, given that we have the cooling loop going through here, it's ideal to keep the batteries nice and cold. Uh, five of these batteries are going to control the entire power plant, given that we are going to have five uh, thingies of each in each power plant. Uh, we use one of each batteries uh, to control their um, 
the fact that they are online or offline. This way we can have a, uh, a ramp up pr power production. It's kind of... you don't really need to do this. Uh, it's kind of useless to be honest. I just like to do things this way because uh, I kind of find it fun to do it uh, this way. This is how uh, in quote unquote real life things work. Uh, you don't have your uh, power plants all running at the same time. You just kind of ramp up production as you go. So kind of just think it's cool to uh, replicate that, but uh, in any case, um, if you really don't want to do this, one battery is all that it takes. Now, I'm going to build the remaining as jumbo batteries, so that we can store any power, any uh, quote-unquote wasted power, um, uh, because they can hold more power than the regular batteries, uh, they are going to stop receiving power um, before they are full. Which means that, let's say that we are completely full on power and we are not using, but for example the steam turbine is still working because, well, it's still working. There is steam for it to consume, and so it's going to be generating power. Uh, that way we have a, uh, a, um, a means from which we can uh, store that power for later use. Well, for a moment I thought I was going insane, because once again, the steel quantity is dropping, and I'm, I didn't build a single thing, I swear. <laughs> okay, I didn't touch the build menu. And uh, then I found out that uh, there is a small amount of steel over here. For some reason, the game is not calculating uh, that steel. So, I, I don't know what what is going on, but... Uh, I suppose I'm going to... Okay, so now we are going to follow you and see what you are going to do with those materials. Wait! Seriously? Steel gas vents. For real. Okay. Alright, my friends. So there is still plenty to build, but the cooling loop uh, can be started. I think that's a great idea. Uh, we already have almost two tons of water uh, inside of the uh, liquid reservoir, polluted water that is. The reason why we use polluted water is because it has a greater range of temperature than regular water, so uh, it is less likely to freeze or to boil in the pipes. So, let's connect this, connect that. Uh, for a moment, let's decrease the priority of this. And uh, disconnect it from there. Cool. Let's see if we can fill up the entire loop with the water that we have. And the temperature that we want is send a green signal if above, let's say, um, 25 degrees. Yeah, that's good enough. So, all of that water only uh, managed to fill up half of the loop. That's fine. I already requested a little bit more, and eventually all of this is going to be full. Uh, but because this water was uh, cold when it first arrived, it already made uh, quite a significant difference. As we can see, it's already shielded out of the place a little bit. Uh, however, we need it to be completely full to get the aqua tuner uh, to start rolling at maximum speed. And uh, only then will we be able to turn all of this water into steam. And uh, this water is also pretty cold, so it's, it is it is also going to take a little bit of time to uh, achieve that. But um, first, first, we need to make sure that the um, entire loop is filled up. Well, my friends, the cooling loop is not yet fully loaded, but uh, it's already heavy. It's already having a profound effect on the environment. Uh, the temperature is now under control, which is wonderful, wonderful news. Which means that uh, on the next episode, and uh, for the rest of this episode, we can start focusing on a um, industrial area. Uh, I'm going to build a massive cooling loop and cooling area over here, uh, with at least four steam turbines and uh, power control thingy to create a power plant. That way we will be able to boost the amount of power that we are producing. Let's go over here. This thing can output a maximum of uh, 850 watts and that can be uh, increased to 1250 watts, which is, you know, considerable, considerably when you have four steam turbines uh, and they are going to be um, quote unquote powered um, by the uh, aqua tuners and by the cooling loops for the uh, forge areas. Uh, that's why it's kind of important to have a large... Okay, that's why it's kind of important to have a large area so that we can have multiple forges. 
Okay, so I'm going to order a large batch of copper. This is going to be the final batch that uh, hopefully we are going to get from this. Uh, we might need a few extra thingies of steel, but uh, hopefully it won't be needed uh, because this water is getting uh, relatively toasty and the uh, slush geyser is dormant, so uh, no cold water is being added over here. Uh, that's kind of terrible, but uh, oh well. This is the select area for the uh, forge, uh, for the cooling loop for the forge area. Uh, we are going to have something of the sort. Uh, like, uh, I'm not going to build them out of steel, this for uh, demonstration purposes only. We're going to have, like, um, four steam turbines, and then in the center the uh, power control station thingy. Uh, then we are going... I I'll have to cancel this, I think, because I don't have the materials. Oh, I have four demonstration purposes. We are going to build two aqua tuners for two separate... Uh, cooling loops, one for the industrial area and another one as, as a reserve for the future. We are going to need it, trust, trust me on that. Um, it's just that it, it's not going to be necessary for a very long time and uh, by the time it comes we can't break open the uh, steam chamber so uh, it's better just to build it uh, right now. And then what we are going to use all of this space for is, let's go into plumbing, we are going to use radiant pipes, uh, we are going to do something like this. Right, and on the bottom we are going to have forges. Uh, these should allow us to have at least four uh, of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there we go. See, that is going to allow us to have four forges uh, that we can pretty much run uh, at full throttle. And uh, the heat that they are going to generate, it's going to... Um, be con it's going to be absorbed by the, by the steam and then by the steam turbines and because we are going to upgrade them they are going to be producing just slightly more power than the forges are going to consume so I'm pretty sure that in the end we might be even gaining just a tad bit extra power uh, to the network all right so the preparations are actually going faster than expected uh, Disregard these warnings, we do have the copper available. Uh, so the way we are going to do this is we are going to have these uh, four tile radiators for three forges that are going to be used for regular stuff such as copper, gold uh, and uh, iron. Yeah, and then we are going to have a larger one where we are going to do our tungsten and our steel. Uh, that's because steel and tungsten generate a little bit more heat than the other materials, and so they need a... It's a good idea to give them a bigger radiator to cool off the coolant. Now, we cannot kickstart the forge before we go to the other, into the other planet, because the coolant of choice is going to be petroleum. Uh, it is the uh, highest boiling liquid that we have access to us in the mid-game, uh, so it's the fluid that we are going to use. Uh, but for that, we need to visit the other planet, which is something that I think I'm going to do in the next episode right from the beginning. We are going to start the episode just by going there uh, so that we might have some access to petroleum uh, by, uh, or in this case to crude oil by the end of the episode. Uh, that would be pretty cool if we could do that. Uh, if not, oh well. Uh, at least we are going to be making progress, and progress we are making. We already are filling this up with brine. Uh, we are going to want to put a bunch of water over here, because we really need a lot, and I mean a lot, of uh, steam to absorb all of the heat produced by the forges. Alright, my friends, the episode is almost ending, but I have to say that the progress that we made today is quite nice. Uh, we have this thing ready for future me to uh, make it operational. We have everything that we need to go into the other planet. And uh, we got this rolling, which is really nice. The uh, effects are almost immediate. Just look at this. Now, this area is no longer extremely toasty, nor are we at risk of overeating our power production buildings. When it comes to plastic production, everything is fine now. We already have almost a ton of plastics from the uh, Dracos alone. Uh, of course that we are going to use it, uh, but still. It's nice to have uh, the plastic assured, and now we have more than enough eggs to uh, just fill 
this um, entire place with a bunch of uh, tr glossy Dracos. But um, with all of that said, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode and that you are enjoying the series so far. If you are, please consider subscribing and help the channel grow. But in the meantime, this is the base manager signing out. Bye-bye. Mm,